Hi, welcome to Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen. I'm Brooke Allen. This is episode 17 and a little unique for us today on this Monday, the first Monday of March. Uh, today, we are broadcasting live from the studios of My Michigan TV in Troy. So uh, thanks so much for hanging out with us. You know, our team, we have had a very busy weekend. It was the 71st Detroit Autorama, and I was lucky enough to be invited and hang out all weekend long uh, with the pinup contest, of course. Uh, you'll see some very familiar faces and uh, names during the show, of course, because we were able to pick up some interviews uh, while we were there. Of course, you see us with Mickey York right there. We'll have more about him coming up. But first, um, I also had the honor of sharing the stage with Jason and Steve. They are the co-owners of Time Warp Vintage in St. Clair Shores, and we were live during the pinup contest. Uh, it was amazing. The girls, so, so friendly and amazing, not to mention beautiful in all their vintage clothes. Of course, you're seeing the shot right there. And again, it was just so much fun, and you can find that replay you can check it out at My Michigan TV, also on our Facebook pages, Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen. Well, uh, coming up, you can enjoy a day at the zoo with Caffeinated Conversations while helping breast cancer patients across Michigan. Uh, we will explain when we introduce you to our community partner. Uh, that is coming up. But first, it is our Women in Business segment, and Sherry Stein. Uh, she is the founder of Design Team Plus, and they are based in Birmingham. They are also one of our streaming partners, so thank you so much for, for that, Sherry. And she is going to tell us how Design Team Plus started. Let's watch. I was a volunteer for a local food pantry while teaching at Lawrence Technological University. And literally, this came out with a passion project, literally giving back to this local food pantry, Yad Ezra, mm -hmm. located in Berkeley. Yeah, right in Berkeley. With my students, okay. designing produce gardens, designing a mural for their wall that's still up on their wall. And it just was this labor of love. It was complete volunteerism. Then in 2013, when we formed Design Team Plus, we actually designed their greenhouse. And that's a beautiful greenhouse. Yes. Right, full yes. greenhouse. So yes, and then I met my business partner, Harold Remlinger, doing another pro bono project for the Friendship Circle for a girl with special needs and on top of it, cancer. So again, another pro bono project mm -hmm. that we did back in 2011 when there was no work going on in the community. Right. And that's how we formed. We, we're doing all this pro bono work. We've got to do, we've got to start a business. Right, right. So that is so important to you. I mean, you mentioned volunteerism and you had two kind of uh, pillars of Design Team Plus, right, for a while. We had a, a, a low profit entity, Team for Community, but that actually merged into Design Team Plus. Okay. So we still give back every year. Like this year we ran a food drive for two local food pantries, Yad Ezra, of course, right. and then St. Joseph's Food Pantry in Troy, where we collected uh, non-perishables and took them to the pantry. So for business owners out there who, you know, I mean, it seems like we do know a lot of business owners that do give back. Right, to the right. community, that's a huge aspect of what they do. But for a business owner out there who may, may be just starting and may be like, well, you know, I can't really give anything back right now because I'm just starting, but what do you say to those people? I say it's really important. We've created a culture, so we pay our employees to volunteer. Oh. It's so intrinsic in us, right. okay. you know, because that's how we started. So that's what we do. And we find a project every year, and we work as a team to kind of come up with where we're going to give back. We've done humani Habitat for Humanity, Galeners, and other various projects. Okay, so you guys do that as a team yes. and figure out how many are on your team? Five. Okay, so five people on your yeah. team. And tell me about Fridays at your company, because I thought this was pretty interesting. Not every Friday. <laughs> okay, Some right. Fridays we work remotely, but right. at least once a month, okay. we do yoga in the office. Nice. So we have Stacy Bishop okay. that comes and does yoga for us. Right. And sometimes we bring our pets. I was just we, yes. Are there goats or dogs involved? <laughs> dogs. <laughs> People bring their dogs. Okay. Milo and Lily come. <laughs> okay, so that is kind of the culture that you you know, that you thrive on. Yes, yes. Okay, so what, anything next coming up for you or? Um, well, we, I think we're always looking for our next big project, but we do a lot of work with um, religious organizations like churches, St. Mark's Coptic Orthodox Church. Uh, we do work with breweries. Oh. So we have two breweries opening up in the area. We have Heights Brewery in downtown Farmington, okay. Sean and Ryan Cavanaugh, they're wonderful people. And then we have Stumblebum opening up in Troy with Eli Green. Okay. So stay tuned, those are gonna be opening soon. All right, well that is excellent. Thank you so much uh, for, for joining us. Me. It's a pleasure to meet you and of course um, Berkeley, that's 
where I live, so I pass uh, Yatters all the yeah, time. That's right, yes, all the time. All the time. So uh, it's just amazing what you do. So I'd love you. to meet you there and take you on a tour. I would love that. Okay. And you know what? I would actually love to bring my kids because I think it's important <laughs> yes. that kids see this and kind of get ingrained in the atmosphere. I would right? be happy to tour you through it. And by the way, I did take that tour of Yad Ezra. Of course, they're in Berkeley, a beautiful place with a beautiful mission. Well, you are watching Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen. This is a show where we brew up topics from a woman's point of view. Uh, we are live in the studios of My Michigan TV today, and we do want to give a big caffeinated thanks to all of our streaming partners. Of course, uh, Design Team Plus, they are one of our streaming partners today. And the list, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. We're so grateful for that. Uh, Time Warp Vintage, of course, one of our sponsors, Frameable faces, Doug and Allie over there, uh, Linda at Skinny Tees, and of course, Sue at Artisan Bath and Skin Care, and you can find it streaming on my own Facebook page, Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen, and also, uh, you can find it at Sari M. Chickarell, her PR page, Catalyst Media, and our community partner, which is the Shades of Pink Foundation. Well, coming up in our Halfway to 100 segment, a well-known Detroit media personality uh, tracks down a vintage car that belonged to his grandmother and he gives it new life. That incredible story uh, coming up. But first, for the next eight weeks, uh, you will be hearing a lot about our community partner, which is the Shade of Pink, Shades of Pink Foundation. Uh, each year, more than 8,000 residents in Michigan are diagnosed with breast cancer, and that is a a huge financial hardship for some of those 2,000 will actually use up their uh, personal savings on medical bills. 800 will be forced to file for bankruptcy. So the Shades of Pink Foundation, uh, they try to prevent that, try to help out these patients who are uh, fighting breast cancer. And board president Mary Pat Meyer, she joined me earlier this month uh, to explain their mission. Let's watch. Yes, so what we do is we provide financial support for breast cancer patients undergoing treatment local to Southeast Michigan for everyday living expenses, such as the mortgage or the rent or car um, payment, car repairs, mm -hmm. transportation, um, utilities, childcare, and insurance premiums. So anything that may suffer because they're going through treatment or surgery. Exactly, and not covered by insurance. Okay. Um, and that's really important. Um, it's surprising that the average income of our applicants, actually their um, monthly income is around $2,000. And we're trying to, well, we can only give away as much as we bring in, right. um, but the average amount that we are assisting with is over $2,000. And so that, that makes a huge impact as at a time where their life has been turned upside down and they are now facing financial um, toxicity, mm -hmm. um, hardship, um, because of the breast cancer diagnosis. And so we hope to help uh, alleviate some of that stress so they can concentrate on healing and on their families. And getting well, right? Exactly. Um, so the statistics are pretty shocking as far as these medical bills that can really drive people into bankruptcy even. Yes. And yeah. so Shades of Pink Foundation help, helps with that. As we just mentioned, you have a huge fundraiser coming up. We do. Which I'm excited about because we will be there. We have a team. It's official. Good. Um, but it is April 27th. And what is uh, the walk? I mean, it's obviously a big fundraiser, but that all goes to help all of these residents. Absolutely. So it's it really is twofold. One is to bring awareness to this often overlooked um, negative impact of a breast cancer diagnosis. You don't think about all these incidental expenses. Um, you know, we hear a lot about research and things like that, but um, the fact that we're here to help with those type of expenses. The walk brings together, so we're anticipating over 2,000 walkers this okay. year, and it brings together um, patients, survivors, we call them thrivers, uh -huh. um, supporters, um, sponsors, and it really is I mean, it's how I got involved in the organization. I um, volunteered to do some photography for it oh, one year. Okay. It is an emotional um, day, but it, it's it's a family, it's a day of celebration as well for those survivors um, and support for those going through the, the process. You know, a lot of times I have found um, throughout my career when you go to walks like this, a lot of people don't want to go because they think it's going to be sad and they don't want, you know, I don't want to feel sad today. I. You know, and, but you just mentioned it's like a celebration of life and it's going for such a great cause. Right, and it provides hope for those that are going through um, the process, through the journey. 
And, um, and it is, it's a day at the zoo. You can bring your family, you can just wander the zoo. It's not like one of those regimented walks. Right. You're blowing a whistle uh, and saying, come on now, stay yeah. in line. <laughs> no, we have a big top, we have, you know, cappuccino, we have, you know. Um, you had me a cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? right? Um, and um, food and entertainment and um, education, obviously, about what the, the cause is. Um, but then you can spend the day at the zoo with your family, so. Okay, so early bird registration, that ends February 15th. It does. Okay, so how yeah. do people register? You can go to shadesofpinkfoundation.org. Um, it's um, yeah, an online, uh, you go under events and you can register. You can also volunteer if you want to volunteer. It takes over 100 volunteers to right. run so it's the- a big event. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and all money's raised, again, we'll stay here local in Southeast Michigan for those applicants um, who are seeking financial help while they're undergoing their treatment. And as you heard Mary Pat say, their walk at the zoo is happening Saturday, April 27th. We will be there. We have a team, as I mentioned. It is called the Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen team. Please join us. And as Mary Pat said, it is going to be a, a day at the zoo uh, for a fabulous cause. Also, uh, their sponsorship deadline for the walk has actually been extended. Uh, that has been extended until March 7th. So if you're interested in sponsoring the Shades of Pink Foundation walk, uh, reach out to them. Of course, you can join our team by scanning the QR card uh, on your screen right now. And I will let you know that I even ordered a uh, pink tennis shoes specifically for that walk. So I'm super excited about that. So please, uh, please join us on April 27th and you can find more information on our website as well. Well, we are a show where we brew up topics from a woman's point of view. And we are live, of course, from the Michigan TV studios. And if there's a resource that you need or a topic that you wanna discuss, you know, reach out to us. You can find that uh, resource and that email right there on the screen. You can also do it through our website, which is caffeinatedconversationswithbrookeallen.com. Well, we reached a very exciting milestone this week. We have reached 1,000 followers on Facebook and counting. Uh, so we need your help to get to 2,000 and beyond. Why not 5,000? Why not 10,000? Uh, you can follow us on Facebook. And of course, you can see all of our shows there as well. And you can also uh, follow us on Instagram at Brooke Allen Official. And we appreciate that. We also love it. Uh, when you share the show, when you comment, and uh, when you say, hey, you know what, I know that person. It's great to see them talking about what they do in our community. So again, thank you for that. Well, coming up, we will talk with former Detroit Lion Lomas Brown about how his foundation is offering awesome opportunities for kids for summer camp of all ages, and even siblings can go. So it's very cool, so stay tuned for that. Of course, we'll be speaking to Lomas Brown. Well. Detroit Autorama at Huntington Place, that was the place to be this weekend. I'm out of breath just thinking about it. There were so many people. And if you follow us on socials, you'll know that we were there all weekend long. 850 cars were on display uh, throughout Huntington Place this weekend. And I mean, we saw hot rods, custom cars, trucks, motorcycles, even uh, Robin there, of course, with the Batmobile. Um, but the one thing that I noticed when you're walking around the show floor, is that you're hearing people talk about, oh, you know what, my dad had this car, or I remember loving that car as a kid. And it really is something special uh, to overhear those conversations. I'm a pro at eavesdropping, by the way, so be careful if I'm the same room with you. Um, but these cars, they remind you of someone special. And uh, uh, this is actually our halfway to 100 segment. If you watch the Tigers, you've already seen this picture, but you will recognize uh, our next guest, of course, it is Bally Sports Detroit anchor Mickey York. And Mickey unveiled his grandmother's 1962 Impala SS at the Autorama. And I had a chance to talk to him about this very special car and what it means to him. Let's watch. Hey, Brooke Allen here. I am at the 71st Detroit Autorama, and I know this guy next to me is going to look familiar. Uh, he does have a day job. And go ahead, for someone who may not recognize you, tell me who you are. I'm Mickey York. Uh, the day job is, is an anchor for Bally Sports Detroit, so yes. Okay, so we caught him at the Autorama in, the, in front of this beautiful car, which has an amazing story. It was his grandmother's, and it has been restored how many times? <laughs> Well, ideally, you only want to restore it once. Uh, unfortunately, an accident uh, forced me to restore it a second time. Okay, so this car has a long history, and you were telling me a little bit about it earlier, and it's just so amazing that you sat in this car as a kid, yeah. 
and you wanted it, but you didn't get it until years later. Yeah, um, you know, it, it stayed in the family until 1996, and my grandmother reluctantly parted ways with it. Uh, we, at the time, didn't have the means to restore it. It needed a restoration. It went to uh, another owner, and uh, she passed away then uh, several years later, and I kept thinking about the car and what happened to it. I wonder if it was still around. Could I find one like it? And we had the VIN number. And we had a policeman friend and helped us out. Come in handy sometimes. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he ran it through the system, and we found where the car was. And it was in Warren, Michigan. And we reached out and said who we were. And uh, he had recognized the last name because he had found an old copy of the original title with my grandfather's name on it. And he said, I'm not looking to sell the car, but I would sell it back to the family. So we stayed in touch, and eventually I, I bought it back in 2009. Okay. And I drove it for several years until it became apparent that like I couldn't drive it safely any longer it needed to be restored I put it through a three and a half year restoration got it back enjoyed it a couple of years brought it here into Autorama in 2018 okay so you were involved in a crash October 9th and the car was completely totaled yeah October 9th 2021 I was on my way to a car show and I was going through an intersection a car turned in front of me I could not stop in time and it yeah it totally wrecked the car so uh, I thought it was gone I thought it was lost. We had a relationship with Motor City Solutions, and I just, I had no expectations. I said, let's get it there, see what you guys think. And they looked it over, and they said, believe it or not, we can we can rebuild this car. And then I had to decide, my gosh, I'm going to try to rebuild this car again. I just, I just did it. Uh, but I was crazy enough and sentimental enough, I couldn't let the car go. Uh, and I said, let's do it. It took me about an hour to figure that out. I just, I, I knew I couldn't let go of the car. So yeah, uh, two and a half years ago, they started working on it and, and bringing it back to life, and we've called it the Motor City Resurrection. Okay. And, uh, and what you see here is the result of their hard work. You know, you mentioned how uh, you're so close to your grandmother and the memories that are involved, and that's what a lot of this is, right? Yeah. It, it's amazing. It is, well, yeah, as a little kid, it was in her garage for years. I, I remember going for rides in it occasionally. She didn't take it out very often. And when she did, she had newspapers over the floor mats of the car, and you were not to disturb the newspapers even when you were in it. So I remember having to sit very still in this car. She's very particular about it. But for years, uh, I think it stopped running, and it sat in her garage. And when I would go over and visit, I would pop the garage door and go in there and just look at it and sit behind the wheel and kind of imagine it, you know, at the time. And I guess I always had an affection for the, affection for the car because I just thought it was really neat. I thought it was really cool. So I have to ask you, does the car have a name? I named it after her, Alma's SS. So she was German, uh, of German descent, and my grandkids, uh, her great-grandkids, called her Oma. So it's Alma's SS. It's a super sport in a palace super sport. So we, we've called it Alma's SS in honor of her. So when you look at this car now, it's so beautiful. What's your first thought? Well, I want to cry. <laughs> Um, it, it makes me emotional uh, because I thought it would never come back at, at one point. So to see it here again, uh, my heart starts jumping. I don't know what my pulse was yesterday when we took the cover off, but uh, probably close to stroking out, I think, at that point. Uh, it's, it's, it's beyond beautiful. It's too beautiful. It's so much nicer than it was before. I'm scared to death to drive it. Of course, I want to, but I don't, uh, I, I'm, I'm terrified because it's, it's so nice. They did an amazing job. and. Every step of the way, these guys at, at Motor City Solutions um, took great care of it. They knew the story behind it, and uh, I, I can't say enough about the work that they did on the car. Okay, so will we see you driving this, or you're still undecided? <laughs> I'm going to drive it. I can't wait to drive it. I just might do it when everybody's sleeping, uh, when there's nobody on the road, just so I can be by myself. I don't know if I can drive with bubble wrap around the car. Um, <laughs> But I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to plan my, my drives. Okay, so what about the Woodward Dream Cruise? Oh, it'll definitely be out on Woodward. Uh, yeah, we'll have it out there. I always take it out early in the morning before the traffic comes to a standstill. But it'll, yeah, we'll be out there. And, you know, even when it's not Woodward Dream Cruise, maybe on a nice summer night, we'll get out there and go grab an ice cream or something. All right, well, thank you so much, Mickey. It's a pleasure to finally meet you in person, of course. I love the Tiger, so I see you all the time. But so nice to know the story behind the car because, you know, it's so sentimental and means so much. It is. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time, Brooke. And again, that is Detroit Valley sports anchor Mickey York. Of course, as he mentioned, the car named after his uh, grandmother, Oma's SS. And it was an honor to meet Mickey in person. I'd never actually met him, so it was 
Uh, fantastic to meet him. And of course, we are looking forward to the Tiger season starting as well. Well, in case you are just joining us, uh, you are watching Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen. Uh, we look a little different today. Usually we are out on location and uh, within the community, but today we are broadcasting live from the My Michigan TV studios. We are in Troy and we're uh, grateful to have this opportunity because like we said, we've been at Autorama all weekend long and it was just kind of one of those, one of those things. So that is where we are today. Uh, we are at My Michigan TV studios. And of course, I'm Brooke Allen. This is a show where we brew up topics from a woman's point of view. Well, we have had so many amazing people on this show. Uh, the show actually kicked off in Farmington on November 13th. As I've mentioned, this is our 17th episode and uh, it continues to grow every month. And I am so thankful for that. So if you have watched the show, been on the show, or have you have even uh, been in the audience during one of the shows, because you know, that is kind of the cool things when we are out, uh, the public can come because those spaces are usually open. So you can come out, watch the show. I can say hi to you. It's just a lot of fun. And really it turns into this incredible networking hour. So if you've been to the show or been a guest on the show and you loved it, please leave a review. Uh, you can find that on our Facebook page in the review section. We appreciate any help uh, you can give us spreading the word about caffeinated conversations with Brooke Allen. Well, coming up, more classic cars for a great cause. We will explain that. But first, I do love sports, of course, baseball, because we had Mickey York on, but I do also love football. And I have to tell you, uh, my dad was, <laughs> he was pretty impressed when I told him I was going to sit down with former Detroit Lion, Loomis Brown, as I like to call him, number 75. Uh, his foundation works very hard to help kids uh, throughout the area stay active and healthy, both mentally and physically um, through his camp. So let's watch my interview with Loomis Brown. Well, there's <laughs> a lot of good things going on, as you know, uh, the kids here. Uh, and that's what my foundation is focused on, the kids in Southeast Michigan. You know, such a big problem with, you know, our kids and pouring resources back into them and, you know, just with what they have to face these days. It's, it's just so different than what we went through. Right. So, you know, as much help as we can give them, as much guidance as we can give them, that's what we're trying to do with the foundation through our camps that we have every year. So the camps, uh, tell me about those because I mean, there's there's so many opportunities, but you really have to have to find them and the kids need to know about them as well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, we, we do sports camps, of course. <laughs> And that, but that is we, shocking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but we do educational camps too, and those are ones I'm more proud of, mostly proud of, are the educational camps. Uh, it's called the LEAP Camp, and it stands for Learn, Earn, and Play. Mm -hmm. And in that camp, we got 60, a minimal of 60 contact hours with the kids. So you're more impactful. You're able to impact their lives more. You're able to really kind of help try to mold them and guide them and show them different opportunities that are out there for them. So that's the one I love. And that, that means those 60 hours, I mean, that's really a time to connect with those kids. Absolutely. Right? And that's what you have to do. A lot of people just think you go in for a day, you spend right. time, with, time with kids mm -hmm. and that's going to do it. No. You have to put in the time with them. Like I say, we have a minimal 60 contact hours with them. So you get to learn these kids over the weeks that you're with them. You get to learn their families too. You kind of get to learn what they're going through. Kind of the lay of the land, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, and you have to do that. The kid's not gonna open up to you until they know they can trust you. And that's what, that just comes over time. What age of kids are we talking about? So we're doing K all the way up really? through. Yeah, because you have to get them young too. You know, a lot of people make mistakes and think, oh, you could get a teenager or mm -hmm. get them older and kind of change these kids. You, uh, we found out you need to get to them young, kind of help them set, set the foundation for themselves and just kind of help guide and tutor these kids through. So we'll start at the K level okay. um, and work our way all the way up. Is to it both boys and girls? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so I've got 12-year-old twins. I'm yeah. signing them up, man. Look, look, I got four <laughs> daughters. I got in trouble because they was like, you always have stuff for the boys. What oh, about for the girls? So okay. that's why they called I started. You up. Oh, they did. Big time. <laughs> big time. <laughs> awesome. So I have to mention something to you because I was told by somebody uh, that last year you won 
the 97 one drop contest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> am, am I right about that? Yes, yes. They, <laughs> you can blame they, Rico for yeah, telling me that. I know. I mean, and uh, I forgot the producer's name. Yeah, he likes to get me in yes, a lot of things. Yeah, so I got two you. drops okay. that they've used with right? me. So, yeah, it's all in fun. It though. is, it is. Fun. And you know, you're <laughs> such a great guy. And these camps, so are they ongoing? Do they start? When are, When do they start? Yeah, so I'll start the, the first one to start right when school ends. Okay. So we'll start, that'll probably be late June, and we'll run that all all way up until school gets ready to get back in, just to keep the kids uh, uh, busy throughout that time. Okay. But we run, run, we run one during the fall, and we run, run one during the winter months, too. So okay. we'll have about three a year that okay. we could do. Yeah. So what about, are there scholarships available? I know that sometimes camp, I mean, it's expensive. Yeah, well, see, that's the great thing about my foundation. I take on all the financial responsibility. So we serve the underserved area. And I believe that you don't want to put financial burdens on those kids or their family. So all the financial burden falls on the foundation. So wow. anything we do is free to the kids. That is amazing. Yes. Okay, so how um, are you already full or can people no, still no, sign up? No, no, so okay, go all right. to the Lomas Brown <laughs> Junior dot org, uh, Lomas Brown, I'm sorry, Lomas Brown <laughs> Junior Foundation dot org, okay. and then you'll see a listing of the camps coming up uh, that we'll have, and yeah, all the kids have to do is just enlist in the camps, yeah, okay. get in there before it fills up, I know, right, man? All right, yeah, are you handing yeah. out jerseys? What are you doing? You know, <laughs> not the jerseys, you know what I'm saying, but we, we hand out a lot of I'm different sure. things, but it, it's, it's a great time. I got a lot of great sponsors. That's why I'm able to do these camps. Uh, free to the kids because of my sponsors that I, I have and have had over the years. So um, for for families that have more than one kid and they may be different ages, is that Come able on. to be worked out? Come on. All right. Come on. All right. Let's Come do on. it. Yeah. Let's yeah, do we it. We don't turn anyone away. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Give me the website one more time. So, Lomas Brown Junior Foundation dot org. Awesome. Yes. Thank yes. you. The big fella. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that could possibly yeah. be. And of course, that was Lomas Brown. He is such a great guy, so nice. Uh, hopefully, we'll be checking in with him again uh, sometime this month to see how the registration for those summer camps is going. You are watching Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen. I'm Brooke Allen. This is where we brew up topics from a woman's point of view. Uh, we are live from the My Michigan TV studios in Troy today. Uh, to learn more about our show, you can go to Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen.com. And you can also check out all of our different segments, offer a topic idea, even. Uh, just get in touch with us. Maybe you want to be a sponsor. Uh, send us an email and you can find all of that information at Caffeinated Conversations with BrookeAllen.com. Well, that's not Jack, or is it? Well, I'll explain as I introduce you to someone who may look very familiar um, that I met at the Autorama. That is coming up. But first, among the many cars at the 71st Detroit Autorama this last weekend, I found a very special story at the D-Lot. That is where they support and raise money for Michigan's Make-A-Wish Foundation. And uh, it was such a great cause. I had the chance to speak to uh, Jody Waite. She is the Chief Development Officer for Make-A-Wish Foundation. Also, uh, D-Lot's owner, Murray Path. Let's watch. <laughs> yeah, I am. A, I, this started 10 years ago. This is our 10th anniversary. And the D-Lot started off as just a showcase of cars I design, built by builders from across the country and friends and manufacturers, and said, hey, will you bring them to Detroit uh, so that we could showcase them? And then I think we had a couple of raffle prizes or something for fun. And then the next year I said, hey, I can reach out mm -hmm. to a lot of my partners and manufacturers and people that I know in the industry. They donated prizes and we raffled them off for charity. And it's grown to this, 7,000 square feet and nine cars and $45,000 in prizes and $31,000 raised last year. Wow, so that is amazing. And of course, Jody, you are with Make-A-Wish. So all of this benefits Make-A-Wish. Absolutely, so um, for the fifth year now, Make-A-Wish Michigan is the benefit. Uh, benefits from this incredible time here at Autorama, courtesy of Murray and his friends. And at Make-A-Wish Michigan, every year we provide hundreds of wishes to children who are navigating a uh, critical illness um, in their family at this time. So in this year, we're anticipating 500 completed wishes, which will be an absolute record-breaking year for us, largest number of wishes granted ever. 
And I'd love to tell you that we're celebrating, um, but that's largely due to increased need um, and the reality that here in the state of Michigan, more than 800 children every year are diagnosed with a critical illness and begin the hardest chapter of their lives. And our role is to provide the hope and the opportunity to continue to think about the future, create those family memories, and ultimately impact health out outcomes positively. Uh, and it takes a lot of friends like Murray to make that possible. So Murray, when you hear that and you know the impact you're making, how does that make you feel? It levels me. I mean, it, it's so touching. A couple, well, we get wish families that just mm -hmm. come by didn't know we were doing this. And said mm -hmm. they come up and they thank me personally yeah. because they tell me how much it meant and what it did for enthusiasm and healing and just their quality of life. That uh, I'm gonna tear up now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how you want to do. But yeah, it 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 takes me to the core and takes all of this fun mm -hmm. that we are having with you know, really expensive play toys and, and, a, and a hobby that we are very fortunate to all have in an industry that I get to work in and pay back, do some good, and to a really great cause. So, I mean, how much better does it get than that? Not much. And, you know, so the auction is going on, right? There's an auction going on. And uh, amazing prize. I mean, are they prizes if they're auctioned? I don't know what they're called. <laughs> but it's an amazing thing that you're. So give me some examples of what people can actually bid on. <laughs> well, it's a hybrid of a fundraiser. So here at Autorama, you can make a $5 donation to Make-A-Wish and get a ticket for it. And we have uh, a handful of prizes from a 65-inch color TV to a 26-inch Harrow BMX bike, a 52-inch $1,000 toolbox, uh, and things like that, uh, that you can have a chance at winning for a $5 donation. Then you can go online and for the next two weeks bid on all kinds of gearhead prizes from wheels to wiring harnesses to detailing supplies to gas tanks. I mean, it's all real gearhead stuff, <laughs> batteries and cases of oil and things like that. But all of that money raised goes straight to Make-A-Wish. I touch none of it, and I take great pride in that. So this is the 10th year, right, is what you said. And as a part of Make-A-Wish, how, you know, and the families you impact, and I think you both said something super interesting as far as it, you're making a wish, you're fulfilling a wish for a family, yeah. but it affects their positivity. Absolutely. So we know that more than 90% of our families, as well as their medical providers, say hands down, not only did the wish create a sense of courage and optimism, but it ultimately created a better health pathway for their child. So we really tried to hold dear, yes, we love a trip to Disney, yeah. we love sparkly stuff, but really our goal is to put that family on a journey where they can stay optimistic, where the next treatment, there's something to talk about because we've got this cool BMX bike that we're waiting for and there's a great, powerful distraction um, and I'll get I'm gonna get you and I'm gonna make myself a little choky right now <laughs> uh -oh. um, but oh, comes. For, for reference earlier in the day we had a dad walk up real slow and I caught his eye and he gave me the head nod and he put his auction uh, or his raffle ticket money down and he could not make eye contact with me <laughs> and he said my daughter is 36 she just gave me my first grandchild and she was a wish kid 29 years ago oh here in wow. Michigan. Yep. And she's a leukemia survivor, uh, doing well, obviously, and is now became a mom about two weeks ago. And so you don't know. You don't yeah. always know when those links are going to come back and punch you and kind of grab you. <laughs> well, um, but that, is the, that is the third wish family that's come to our booth today. So when, when we look out into the world and we say 800 kids in Michigan this year are going to be diagnosed with a critical illness, that's parents, that's siblings, that's classmates. There's the ripple that gets pulled into that experience. And we have a lot of those folks here today at Autorama. And what an amazing thing. I mean, we're all sitting here kind of tearing up because it is, it is such an amazing thing. And you would never expect all these beautiful cars, yeah. you know, gearheads and everything else uh, to make such a difference and such an impact. Yeah, I can't top that. <laughs> I, I can't right. top well, that. Yeah. But I will say it's is that circle. there's a there's a there's a grit and a determination in the city of Detroit that is very much in the value set of every Make a Wish Michigan family and every family that's navigating this type of crisis. And I think why we feel so at home here is that this is a room full of fighters, and we understand that. So we're so grateful. Thank you. So real quick, can you give me the Make a Wish website so people yeah, can check absolutely. it out or donate so even if you after? Want to learn more, donate, sign up to volunteer, get connected to Murray. You can visit us 24 hours a day at Michigan.wish.org.
Okay. Thank you so much. And Murray, a pleasure. Thank you for everything yeah, you do. It's an amazing it. thing. And congratulations on 10 years. Yeah. Yay. Look forward yeah. to done more. Yeah. Awesome. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And again, that was Murray Path and Jody Waits. To date, 11,500 Michigan wishes uh, have come true due to everyone's donations. And we will be posting that link in our Facebook comments if you should happen to want it and make a donation. Well, you are watching Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen. We are broadcasting live from the My Michigan TV studios. This is episode uh, 17. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Please look us up and, of course, uh, give us, I was going to say, give us a subscription. Just subscribe. That's good enough. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, I met so many amaz amazing people at Autorama this week. And as you've seen, Mickey York, Murray Path, uh, Jody Waits from Make a Wish Foundation. Uh, but there's another person that I met. Actually, I met him on Friday, and then I was able to snag an interview with him on Saturday. Uh, he may look familiar to you. His name is Craig Janos, or, or is it? Let's watch. You look like ketchup and mustard. <laughs> is that a good thing, bad thing? I'm That's not even thing. <laughs> so, okay, so you obviously look like Jack, right? But And you've got a lot of great stories about that, but you also work for GM. I'm retired from GM styling, yeah, about 10 years ago. <laughs> so the interesting thing that you told me last night was how this all happened for you because you were playing softball, right? Oh, oh yeah, well, we had, a, we had a softball team at work. And I got a pair of sunglasses, uh, prescription sunglasses for the first time. And we were out playing and I worked up a sweat and I combed back my hair to keep it out of my eyes. Came into the bench and they're all staring at me. And I'm like, what? They go, you look like Jack Nicholson with those sunglasses on. So uh, in fact, uh, two of the people they have a car here today, uh, the husband and wife, they were the first ones to mention it. And it kind of went on from there. And it, and it did go on from there because you even told me about when the Pistons were playing the Lakers. Well, even before that, I won a Jack Nicholson look-alike, sound-alike contest with uh, Channel 2, Marcus Red Fox, and Star Theaters at the time. And then, I don't know, it was probably about 10 years later in 04 when they were uh, the Pistons were playing the Lakers in the NBA Finals. One, two, three, Jack came in for Game 5. And they did a split screen with me and him on network TV. So, did you know they did that? No, not till I got home and saw a videotape. <laughs> okay, so you, I mean, obviously, I'm I, loud here. Can you <laughs> go ahead? So loud here. So, I have to tell you, our, we took our picture last night. Yes. And I sent it to my mom, and she's like, no, that is not Jack. You're right, it's not Jack. <laughs> <laughs> but said, it's as good as it gets. <laughs> you know, it's such a pleasure to see you again. Um, okay. Thank you so much. And, you know, I, I need another picture with you after this. Yeah, I left you a whole envelope of goodies oh, with your friend there. Thank you so Take much. Care, All everybody. right. Don't <laughs> Craig Janos, it was so great to get to know him. He did leave me this whole in incredible packet. It was so awesome. I was looking through it this morning. Uh, pictures from when they were filming Hoffa here in Michigan years and years ago, of course. Uh, funny side note about that. I had actually moved to California to pursue acting, but my uncle was here in Michigan and got cast in Hoffa. So... That's just how it goes sometimes, I guess. So, uh, again, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we are hoping to see Craig Janos around town this summer. I will be looking for him at the Woodward Dream Cruise. Well, we are so proud to be a community partner with Shades of Pink Foundation. Their mission is to reduce financial stress for bre breast cancer patients across the state. Uh, they are having their walk. It is happening at the Detroit Zoo April 27th. Uh, we have our own team there. Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen. You can scan that QR code that you're seeing on your screen right now and join our team. Uh, we promise you it'll be a lot of fun. Of course, there will be a lot of pink there. I've got my new pink tennis shoes I'm so excited about. Uh, but it will be a great day to raise money uh, to help all of these uh, patients going through uh, treatment for breast cancer. It will be an awesome day. Again, uh, join our team. Come out. You can spend the whole day at the Detroit Zoo. Again, that is April 27th, and we know, at least we hope, that the weather will be nice that day. Uh, by then, there should be 
lots of sunshine, right? Again, you can scan that QR code. Well, thank you uh, for everyone for joining us today. And of course, all of our streaming partners and Michigan, My Michigan TV, that is where we are today, broadcasting live from their studios. Dave Scott, Kelvin over in the control room, of course, uh, Christina McDaniels, my executive producer, and to all of you who are watching, emailing story ideas, or just uh, sending us notes through Facebook saying how much you're enjoying the show. So thank you so much. Again, if you do have a topic uh, that you would like us to talk about or you know somebody uh, that you would like us to talk to, you can send us an email and you can do that through our website, Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen. Uh, dot com. Well, we are in a brand new location next week. I will give you a hint. We will be in Ferndale, but I'm not going to tell you actually where. Uh, you'll find that this week on our socials. Uh, but you can also find me at Brooke Allen Official. So thank you so much for watching us, Caffeinated Conversations with Brooke Allen. I'm Brooke Allen. This is episode 17. The weather is beautiful today. Enjoy your week, and we'll see you next week.